So bismillahir rahmanir rahim ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil karim amma ba'd uh, today i want to talk about quran and a study case of quran and science but using flat earth you can say as a study case about what is the proper quranic methodology to understand quran and i guess like this balance between Quranic interpretation, uh, science, and not going too uh, in, into into modes of absolute, right? On the one side, and on the other side, benefiting from the science. So, like this balance. Now, the reason I want to take flat Earth as a case study, there are many reasons. Number one is because there is a large group of Muslims that are now flat earthers, which I think is part of the deception. But what is more so happening is because they're online and they're chatting with people. So people are going through a crisis of Iman because if they believe the earth is round and then they're being convinced because of wrong interpretations of the Quran that the earth is flat. And, uh, you know, people are naive, they don't understand the Arabic la language, and they don't understand levels of interpretation. So I'm going to give examples of what I'm trying to say. And so people assume that, okay, wait, the earth is absolutely, the Quran is absolutely 100% talking about flat earth, right? So once they're convinced of that, then they go into a crisis of Iman. And I've received several emails from several people that are like, Wait, if this is true, this, you know, this, but we, you know, if this is true, what can I, like, they're, 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 they're in a crisis of their iman. Okay. And on the other side, you have, of course, Christians saying, see, the Quran talks about flat earth. So you have this. And uh, there's another problem with flat earth as a study case, which is that it goes against our entire tradition. I mean, just because a few scholars said the earth is flat uh, doesn't mean the earth is flat, you know, because we have our Qibla, uh, um, our Qibla uh, formulas, we have our Qibla astrolabs that are global, okay? And in fact, I'll show a picture of that. But before we come to that, I don't want this to be about bashing flat earth. Because that is not my main intent, even though I'm very upset with the phenomenon because of the crisis they're creating in the Muslim community, you know. And I'm also upset because it goes against everything in our tradition. So having that set aside, I want to deal with the flat earth from purely a perspective of interpretation. Okay. So... <clears throat> Let us uh, start with the words the Quran uses. Uh, the words Quran uses for um, for the earth. Okay, so I'm going to come to this in a little bit. But for example, uh, one of the uh, words will come to the words that are used only once in Quran. But first, we'll use the word basata. Okay, so Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word basata, right, uh, for the earth. Uh, so, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you can find it here with me. Uh, <laughs> right, so the brothers that will say, see, the earth is extended for you. It's made expanse for you. Therefore, mm -hmm. this means the earth is what? Flat. There are two major mistakes with all of these interpretations. The first is the word ard. You know what's so funny? Is the word earth is being given the meaning of post-industrial meaning, which is the whole of the earth. Which was never the interpretation taken by the Mufassirin for the first 900 years. Because the word ard meant the land that grows uh, cultivation or the land that is under your feet 
or the, it's, it, it was a local phenomenon. For example, when the Quran said, uh, and don't cause corruption in the world, in the earth, right? So nowadays, because of our globalized world, we think of the whole earth. But in this ayah, it's specifically about the word ard is being used for Medina, right? Don't cause, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, fi adna al-ard, in the earth nearby. That's not a different earth, it is the land nearby. So the first thing you have to do when you're going to do an interpretation is you have to be, uh, if you're talking about something is coming from tradition, then you have to hold it at that. You can't compare apples with oranges, right? So for the word bisata, you want to use one of the pre previous mufassirin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you, have you seen the, uh, what the flat earths, the, their, 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 their belief of what the earth is? Did you ever see yeah, it? I, I've seen a visual representation. Yeah, with the, the ice flat... wall, with the, yes. the sun and the moon. And the dome. So if Allah says there's a roof, then there must be an actual roof, <laughs> right? So we'll come to that because there's another verse in Sutta Tariq that actually explains that. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Okay. So is the earth being basata, expanded, means it is expanded as in a flat earth necessarily? Meaning, look, there are two levels of interpretation, right? There is the muhkamat and mutashabihat, and there's qat'i, dhanni, there's the zahir, there's the dalalatun nas, there's isharatun nas. Is the nas saying that literally? So, for example, if we read in Quran, la ilaha illallah, can there be any other interpretation of that? No. It, la ilaha illallah will mean la ilaha illallah. When you say the earth is basata, and you look at the word basata at first phase, Second, you look at the word basata, how it's used in Quran in other places, right? So, for example, just as an example here, we see the word basata is used in many different scenarios, right? Wallahu yabsutu ilayhi wa ilayhi turja'un. Id hamma al-qawma an yabsutu ilaykum aydiyahum. And when the people decided of a nation to extend their hands to you, Right? Meaning to hurt you. Right? Allahu yabsutu rizqa liman yasha. And Allah extends the rizq for whoever he wants. So we'll come to the tafsirs later on. But even before tafsirs, you're supposed to look at the word. And then you're supposed to decide, does this word, is this word qat'i? Like it's absolutely meaning the, the meaning of, or am I giving an interpretation? Now, I'm going to ask you, if Allah, if someone believes that the earth is flat and he reads, Wallahu ja'ala lakum al arda bisata, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth basata, is that if I say therefore it is a flat earth, is that, is there ta'wil in there or is that what the ayah is saying? As far as the Arabic goes, the eye doesn't say flat at all. I mean, you can't really translate the sata as being flat. And and to be just, there's no place in the Quran that says the earth is round. Yes. But there are indications, just like if somebody believes the earth is flat and can say, Allah has made the earth for you spread out. This means it's flat. But that is, however, an interpretation. And the problem comes when people say, this is what they say. They say there's been no greater trickery and deception than the flat earth phenomenon. This is the biggest trickery on mankind. And the problem is that if it had been so, then the prophet would have told us so. <laughs> if it was really that big, right? Number two, that you have to be clear that you are doing a ta'wil of Qur'an. It may be right, it may be wrong. If I show you a verse, and I'm going to show you a verse that seems to suggest to me that the earth is moving, you're going to, brother, use your expertise to tell me that is this ta'wil or something more than ta'wil, right? 
I mean, كل في فلكي يسبحون is uh, yeah, yeah, is an yeah. 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 I mean, there, there's many. Like I said, there's the problem of the ijma. There's the problem of كل فلكي يسبحون, and I'll show you why that includes the earth. Uh, in in just a little bit, it's it's very good. Sheikh, I just want to make one quick point here. Yeah, yeah, in the, in, the yeah. in the time, sir, uh, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I think the predominant idea, the way the science was understood, was that it was flat. Um, if we look at the history of uh, astrology, uh, astrophysics, back in those days, you didn't have any telescopes. You you couldn't look at uh, you know the uh, the phenomenon the the planets and and whatnot really floating in the space. You you did not have that empirical knowledge. So the predominant theoretical idea was that the earth was flat, and so the ayat of the Quran were understood in in that light. What is the problem there? Allah says and and. We already talked about this, you and me, before making this uh, recording this video. Was that Sabirihim uh, ayatina fil afaqiyofi anfusihim? And so Allah Himself uses this this sa uh, sa nurihim. In future, we will show. So it's the revelation of uh, uh, natural phenomenon through historical development of mankind. People who have emailed you, there, there were some people who actually. They vehemently uh, argued with me as well, saying, you know, the Bolivi uh, sect, especially in my subcontinent, he, it believes that the earth is flat because it is written in the books in uh, like Sheikh Ahmed Raza Khan, a huge name for, for these people. He said that the earth uh, is flat. But these people are drawing upon the classical knowledge from the Mufassirin of the time where they had this knowledge from the scientists that the earth is flat. And so the predominant narrative of the science was that the earth is flat. I don't understand, Sheikh, how can you bring that as evidence? Because as humankind grew in, in, in knowledge, in scientific knowledge, and discovered that the earth was not flat, it was settled once and for all empirically that, okay, the earth was not flat. And also, Sheikh, you talked about Isharat and Nas. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are four levels of, of interpretation. There is Isharatun Nas. First of all, there is Aibaratun Nas. Then there is Dalalatun Nas. Then there is Isharatun Nas. Then there is Iqtidaun Nas. So the fir first interpretation always is the Aibaratun Nas. What is being said in the words themselves, the, the way they are understood in a given language. And through that, no matter how much you try, you would never be able to prove that there uh, is an ayah, which is a mahkam ayah, that says one, with 100% certainty that earth is flat. Yeah, and, and this is the other thing I want to mention is Quran is talking from the perspective of the observer. Yes. The experience of the observer. The natural phenomenon from the experience of the observer. Even though Ahmed bin Hanbal alayhi, said there is an ijma in our time that the earth is round. Imam Nihazam said the same thing. Imam Nithamiya yes. said the same thing. But there was always a minority that felt the earth is flat. But their feeling the earth is flat, this is also another very important point, is not the same flat earth that the flat earthers are talking about. This is a very important point because when the earth was not explored right they didn't the concept they had in their mind was not of this because see the the flat earth that the flat earthers including the muslims unfortunately they have fallen for this see when you look up and i'll just show this to you very flat earth this actually has so many problems everything from tawhid to because what they do is they put God on top. They're putting their their purpose of doing this is to put a physical location to everything. And, and the thing is, the narrative is not from Muslims. The narrative is from Christians. Christians. Yeah, it's the Christian narrative. So this mm -hmm. is like the typical uh example that they give of the flat earthers today. Okay. That this is the ice wall. And when you are calling Muslims to the flat earth, 
this is the image. Even if you have your theology all correct, but they're going to get a lot of their information inadvertently from the Christians. So now you got two problems. First, you're talking about flat earth as if it's a matter in which there's no doubt. And you're putting the iman of the people in crisis when the Quran is not saying what you're saying. And number two, you're leading the Muslims that are coming into this into a potentiality of going in directions that are going to completely take them into uh, into the the hollow earth and all of that. Okay, so uh, that is one aspect: is that uh, this is not when the when when the ulama were translating, as you'll see, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ بِصَوْتَ Allah made the earth for you expanded. This is not the idea they had in their mind at all. Okay, completely incomprehensible to them. Okay, so now let's uh, continue on. So I think with uh, Basata, it's uh, pretty clear in the case of Basata that uh, this cannot be taken as flat earth. It, it can You can infer it as flat earth. That Allah has spread it out, therefore it must be flat. Okay. I don't necessarily have a problem as long as you're being clear that this is a ta'wil that you're giving to it and is not absolute. Even though I completely disagree personally. Okay. The second uh, word they talk about in the Quran is the word uh, 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 yeah. Did we not make the earth for you a mihada? And they say, look, a resting place means a resting place, therefore it's stationary, and the earth is not moving. This is the interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, but the word mihada, right, the resting place or cradle, and from there to make the assumption, the inference, because when you look at the other ways this word is used in Quran, right? But uh, so, for example, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Yukallimu uh, nasa fil mahdi wal kahla." In that case, okay, how the Quran. Uh, uses it wal arda farashnaha and the earth we made it a floor the ni'mal mahidun and we're the best of spreaders right mahattum lahum tamhida over here it means to make something easy so the word mahad one of the meanings is to make something easy and you'll see this because when you look at the mufassirin in khulasa what they do is they use all of when they're saying basata they're explaining it with mahad when they use the mahad they use the word basata because their understanding was of the Mufassirin, when you take them as a whole, as I'll show you, is that Allah is saying, I made things easy for you, livable for you over here on earth. This is the initial understanding of these words that the Mufassirin used. No one ever said uh, uh, the earth is flat in the sense that they're saying, yes, people did say the earth is not flat. Why did they say that? Because the world at that time believed that the earth was flat. This is uh, very well established uh, by many, many scholars. Okay. So, so Mahad, uh, let's see what other words we got. Bisa but I think there is uh, this very important thing to note again, like you said, there was never a consensus on it being flat. There was never a consensus of being flat, but there was almost a consensus based upon the Qibla uh calculations that it was uh spherical Super. i won't i won't say global but i will say spherical absolutely 100 percent. there's no question about it because that's where the calculations were taking us that's where the technology was taking us and uh i'll i'll, I'll i'm gonna go into that in a little bit and again, he made the earth a resting place. Okay. Now, uh, 
in the day where the human beings will be like moths spread out, right? So Firash doesn't mean necessarily the earth is flat. You fall into another uh, inter problem of interpretation. That is that when you come to the edge of the earth, right? Once you come to the ice caps, what happens to the earth being basata there? Mm -hmm. Being spread out. Right? Uh, when you have uh, words like sutihat, uh, for example, wa ilal ardi kaifa sutihat. I think, for, for me, out of all the words Quran uses for earth, the most close word to meaning flat is this ayah. Wa ardi kaifa sutihat. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. This word sataha, you probably know this word sataha. Satih yes. is the closest word in Quran to mean to mean level and flat. And it's only used once in Quran. But what's interesting, when is this word used? So the mountain is mentioned before, which is part of the earth, right? So we leveled out the earth, but if the earth if the earth is level, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have mountains and valleys, right? So in what sense is the earth sotihat? In what sense? I would say all in, out of all of the words in Quran, this is the only word in the whole of Quran that comes to close to meaning sutihat is the closest word to mean flat. Would you agree? Sheikh, I don't see flat here either. If you ask me honestly, I mean, I still think this is just a synonym to the previous words that we studied. It's about spreading the earth out. Uh, and I think mostly when the Quran uses this, I think mostly what, what the Nas, as somebody who understands Arabic, I would like to say I understand it as something being lost. When you look at it from a onlooker's perspective, your ken, it fills your ken till the, uh, you know, the limit of your eyesight, it's spread out. So you, you can look at it and it goes till the end of your ken. What is the most that I draw from these ayat as an Arabic speaker? Uh, I would like to say that. I, I don't check clearly, uh, uh, honestly, I don't see how Sutihat can mean that we've made earth into a flat thing. I think it, it simply means that we have spread it out for your ken, for your, for your eyesight. But we use Sathai, the word Sathai, to mean surface, right? We do, and in Arabic, when when you say you know ala sath ala sath al 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 ay shay, yani ala sath al ma, or we say it it doesn't necessarily mean that right right that, it doesn't necessarily yeah. well, yeah. I, you you get know what I'm saying right, Sheikh, as a as an Arab speaker. Yes, absolutely, and then the other word, which again is the same as basata, is wal ardi wa ma tahaha. And the earth and how we spread it out. Okay. Sheikh, one thing about the Farsh. I think uh, one of the interpretations we find in uh, one of the Mutakhirin, uh, in the Mutakhirin uh, Tafsir, and I think which is very pertinent to mention here, is that there Allah is talking about the gravity, the force of gravity. That Farsh, that we have made it a resting place for you, meaning that through gravity, you can now rest upon it. You know, you're not floating in the air, but you are resting upon it. That's what the first can also mean. So it's also hinting at the phenomenon of gravity. So that's that's the point, right? So when it's hinting at something, we can't say 100% that's what it is. We can't. But, but when it's saying gravity, when it's saying thakal, thakal means gravity. Thakal. Yes. Everyone, everyone in the Arab world, all from beginning to end, have understood the word thakal to mean weight and to mean gravity, right? Yes. And so, uh, anyway, so we'll uh, uh, come to that maybe at some point. But 
what I want to be most clear to my brothers and sisters, the flat earthers and not flat earthers, that when we say Quran is saying this, we have to be careful of the words we use. We cannot say the Quran is saying this. We have to say that it is. It, you can infer from these ayat the Quran is saying this. You can infer from the Quran that the Quran is saying this, and then you have to prove it at the level of the words. You have to prove it that it has some, you can say, um, uh, correspondence with the way the word is used in other places in Quran. And uh, then if we come to, for example, now I want to give this as an example of the different words we looked at, right? Uh, by the way, the word aqtar is sama. Aqtar is sometimes used to mean diameter in geometry. In, in Yes. Right? Aqtar is the diameter, meaning there is a, there is a radius and di there's a center, which can only be in certain circumstances, which uh, I, I might talk about later on okay so this is one of the tafsirs uh, using one of these words jamul bayan uh, uh, so wallahu ja'ala lakum al arda bisata i just randomly took different tafsirs for each one of these wor words just looking at each each word about three times in three different random tafsirs allah has made the earth for you basata what does he say that you turn over in it, uh, okay? And the way this, you way you turn over your blanket or your carpet, right? It's made easy for you the way the carpet's been made easy for you, right? Yes, yes. absolutely, yes. Okay, let's see if there's another one here because I don't know how many of them came out. Uh. Now notice this this uh, okay, wal ardi wa ma tahaha and the earth we have spread it out. Ihdahuma fi thalath the aujih. There are three possibilities here. Ihdahuma ma'nahu basataha. They're just interchanging them. The meaning of it is basata. We spread it out, meaning we made it easy for you. We spread it out for you, and this is the statement of such and such. Wa ma'nahu qasamaha, meaning we have uh, determined this is going to be like grass and this is going to be harvest and this like we've made in land into different types uh, whatever is created in it, in it. Yes. meaning Allah created it go ahead Yes, absolutely Sheikh I was smiling that yani ma khalaqa fiha yani simple as that well, the, the earth and everything we have created in it. What is the problem there? As an Arabic speaker, it's I think it's very uh, simple to understand. Yes. And then let's see what comes up here. Uh, this is Tafsir ibn Jawzi. Uh, this again, Tahaha. What does he say? Ma'na Tahaha Basataha. Yaminan wa shamalan. He spread it out into the east and to the west. There's no concept of the flat earth as today. Inshallah. Okay. So, Bismillah walhamdulillah. Going back to uh, where we were quickly. Um, so, we were looking at the different tafsirs. And I wanted to comment on, I think we were here. Yeah? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so look at how the tafsirs are doing it. When we're looking at tafsirs of the past, they're, all their understanding is that what? That the earth is made uh, in your service, right? Sahara lakum ma fis samawati wa ma fil Everything in the heavens and the earth has made subservient to human beings. So, uh, you mentioned that word. And let's go on to the next. Um, basataha, yaminan wa shimalan, wa min kulli janib. 
we mentioned this. It's been spread out for you from all directions. That's what it means. You look here, look there. Uh, and then the word basata is used. So they use these words interchangeably. And then let's look over here what we got. Uh, uh, made it khafif, light for you. This is how they understood it. So, you know, that's how they understood it. Uh, and sotihat again, with sotihat, the word basata and mahad is used. Bositat wa muhidat. And then next tafsir, let's see what we got. Basata. Uh, and then he uses the same word to describe the word. Yeah. Actually, Sheikh, with all due respect, I mean, this is all very funny for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but I want this to be clear that you have to be clear what the previous generation was thinking. And when you're, because the, the flat earthers, they try to make it look like all our tafsirs were saying what they're saying. Okay. And the point is, no, the primary tafsir is that Allah is saying, Allah has made the earth subservient to you. You know, Allah has made the earth easy. That's the primary meaning, right? Now, if you want to infer after that, to something, then please do so. But be clear, you're inferring. Don't say Quran is saying. Because as a result, what is happening is that you're hurting people's iman for the people that believe that the earth is round. And so this is a very uh, dangerous state we put ourselves in. Uh, just as a few other examples before, I, you know, uh, alam alam al arda mihada. So to explain mihada, he used the word firash. And this is how they're in the Dakar Allah Ta'ala, Huna Hadi Mahnukat Allah, you know, etc. etc. These are uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth uh, easy for you and not hard for you, and so on and so forth. And the, the takhleek of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and this is Hujja ala Tawheed, so on and so forth. This is how they And the Mufassir is saying, I mean, he's simply taking this as Ta'kid for uh, He's the one who's created everything for you. So Allah is saying, Alam Najal Al Ardam Hada, Al Jibala Autava, Wahlak Makum Azwaja, Al Jalla Makum Shibata. And if you are reading too much into it and saying oh, this is flat earth, well, then like we we are going to come to it, you are going, going to have to reconcile the ayat where Allah says kullun fi falakin yasbahun. We're going to come and, to that uh, ayat. That yeah, yeah, exactly, Shay. So, uh, okay, what else do we have? Alam najalil arda mihada ay firashan. So it's all interchangeable. Uh, I think we we just did this. Uh, it just repeated itself. That's fine. Alam naj'alil arda mihada. Alam naj'alil arda mamduda. Lakum kal farash. Kal farash. Mahidatan lakum kal farash. Yes. So he's even using the same words to describe it. Uh, yes. Istikrar alayha. Mihada means you have a place of rest. We, we, the same thing. Uh, over here, Alam Najal al Arda Mihada, Quria, Bil Ifrad, Mahdan, Aik al Mahdil, Litifil. So it's like a resting place, like for a child, uh, like the cradle of a child. Waqaddama lil Shaykh, and even for an old person. And then he quotes another verse of the Quran. 
Okay, what do we have? Alam naj'alin arda mihada. This is takwini. Yani, this is wa fiha ma'na taqrir wa so uh let me see. Uh the same words are being used. Mahad and firash so on and so forth. معنى أنها كالمحد للصبي right sometimes it's hard for me to read but ألم نجعل الأرض مهادة والجبال أوتادة and over here he's talking about the day of judgment and the word well, but the meaning is the meaning is the same as we have seen in the previous uh exegesis in the it's like a cradle for, for a child in which it it sleeps right so to take it from there to its flat that's an inference that you cannot say that's what the Quran is saying. You could say it is inferring that. But to infer that, mm -hmm. you have that's why I want to go through this and then I want to mention some rules that will be helpful, inshallah, to everyone so that uh, we're not making these mistakes. Firash al art, firash al an'am ala ma'na, an'am ala ma'na, naha farashat lahum ay basatat. Same thing. I mean, and then he says, uh, uh, He hasn't made it har harsh for them or hard for them. Okay. What else do we have? Ma'na, ja'alnaha firash and ja'alahu. And so he's explaining, we've made it. And let me see what else he's. Uh, some of it is lean soft because of the rain. Some of it is left hard. Uh, it's easy. Uh, and it's made easy to stand in it and to lay down in it. That's what it means. Right. Yes. Imagine laying down in Mars or Venus or some other place. <laughs> and this is the last one I have before we go further. So firash means basatun, like uh, like your uh, sleeping places. Yes. 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 Yeah, like you lay down in your uh, bed for a rest, right? So, uh, so this is the traditional understanding. And these are all like different tafsirs across the board. I just took, you know, across the board, just to kind of give an example of what we're taking, which ayat we're taking to infer that the Quran is absolutely 100% saying the earth is flat. So this is the problem, is that now I believe the earth is round. So now I'm going to give an example of how do we in say or what words do we use or how do we infer, right? Because first question is, does there any place in the Quran say the earth is round? No. So I can't say that the Quran says the earth is spherical or round in that sense. Now I will come to another point, and that is that the Muslim world determined that the earth is spherical, not by looking at the earth, but by looking at the movement of the sun and the moon and the other planets. And since I would say that it is not enough that when you're studying the subject of flat earth, that you look at only the words in Quran regarding earth. You have to look at the words Quran uses for the moon and for the sun. 
because one of the things is that always traditionally until recent times, the modern West, physics and mathematics, the physical phenomenon and mathematics were always connected. And what happened as a result was that when they were, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الشمس والقمر بحسبان The sun and the moon follow a calculated orbit. If you are right in your... So, Bismillah. Uh, so, Brother Muhammad, I was saying that there's a rule. And the rule is, like the Quran says, الشمس والقمر بحسبان The sun and the moon follow a calculated path. Always in history, physics and mathematics have always been together. How do I know if I'm right about something? In the physical world, it is that I can show a mathematical formula that works. Okay? If I cannot show a mathematical formula that works, that means that I'm making some mistake. If I can show the movement of the sun and the moon through mathematical formulas, that means someone's on the right track. Okay. Now, when we look at this phenomenon, for example, I'll give you an example, eclipse. Can humanity today, using the mathematical formulas, tell us when the next eclipse will happen? Yes. Yes, yes they can. So... Unless the flat earthers give me a formula of their own. You know what's so funny? The flat earthers use the formulas of the ones that the Muslims gave the non-Muslims for the eclipse. And then say, and then they look at the eclipse and then they don't believe that it's the sun, right? They call it the black sun. They call it, they, they believe there's another sun other than the sun, which goes against the hadith of the Prophet because the Prophet said, Ayat, because when his son passed away, he said, The sun and the moon, these are this phenomena of the sun and the moon doesn't eclipse because of, uh, of, of somebody's death. That hadith clearly negates uh, the idea of the black sun. But anyway, so when you're able to calculate, that means you understand a physical phenomenon. If I say I'm going to throw a ball and the ball is going to land 50 feet from here based upon a calculation, that means I understand the weight of the ball and I understand all the other elements, right, that will cause the ball to land after 50 feet. That means I have understood a physical phenomenon. And the Quran points to this in several places, this relationship that physics and mathematics always go together. Okay. A physical phenomenon of the world. And so the most basic question the Quran will ask is that, did you have the hisab? Did you have the calculation? Right. This is why there's such a big even uproar in the Muslim community that we do we do it by observation or can we also do it by astronomy or as you know, uh, and Imam Shafi has the opinion, yes, you could because he sab is qat'i, whereas what you see may be vanni. Anyway, that's a different debate and I'm more of the opinion we should see, but we should use calculations to determine where we can't see the moon. Right? So for uh, So for example, uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen these uh, charts before, but I'll show it to our uh, community here. Uh, this is the website of uh, uh, Khalid Shokat. Uh, may Allah bless him. Uh, he was a Muslim brother who worked at NASA. Okay, And uh, he's a very good Muslim. He had bayah with Dr. Sraham. He, sure. he yeah, and uh, visibility curves. Okay, so let me just uh, see how do I. So, 
So this is what observation can tell you. Where it is green, like in this case, it tells you that you could see, definitely see with the naked eye. Blue means visible, visible if perfect conditions in that area of the world for that day, right? Mm -hmm. Gray means optical aid to find the moon. And D, visible only with optical aid. Now, you can see this is a matter of degrees. It's a matter of high probability and degrees. So we know if somebody, for example, looking at this map of visibility says, I saw the moon in India or Pakistan, we're going to say that's very highly unlikely, especially if the weather is bad. But if the person says, I saw the moon in the U.S., it's more likely that he was able to see, and that a lot of people were able to see in this case, the map from the, the moon from the U.S. Okay. So this is the visibility curve. Now, what am I trying to show here? I'm trying to show that we have now been doing these calculations for more than 20 years, every single day. Every single day, there's a map, and it, the hisab of it is never wrong, right? The mathematics of it is never wrong. It never happened that some place was red and some, a lot of people saw, oh, no, the moon was here today, right? It will never happen that way because the mathematics is right. And the Quran puts this foundation of al-shamsu wal-qamaru bihusban amongst many other ayahs that the sun and the moon follow a calculated path. So when you have figured out that calculated path, then you have figured out the curvature. Because that's part of this, right? The visibility is part of part of it is looking at the curvature. I remember Khalid Shokat, uh, may Allah bless him, when he, we had we did uh, itikaf together for ten days, sure. and in that, you know, he was a pioneer in America on this whole science of the mathematics of Quran and the sun and the moon, like this whole mathematics of this. So if the flat earther brothers feel that the earth is flat, then they should be able to predict when is the next eclipse. They should be able to predict that where on the earth you will not be able to see the moon. They should be able to predict where you will definitely be able to see the moon if you have enough people out there. The fact that they cannot do that, and they will never be able to do that with a flat curve because the earth is not flat, shows that there is a Quranic challenge to them that is not working. Now, let us go further. And now what you have to do, so let's say, I'll, you, pretend to, you pretend to be the person who believes in the earth being spherical. And I pretend to be the person who believes in flat earth. I present to you the verses that I presented to you that they present that the earth is flat. I cannot say if I'm a scholar of Islam, if I'm a if I'm a proper traditional scholar of Islam, I cannot say that the Quran says it's flat. Can I say that? No. no. I can only say that I don't I I'm inferring that the earth is not round because it's spread out in my experience and that I feel that it is flat like but I don't know what it is. Okay. Yes. The most you can say is that I don't know for certainty what it is, but it appears to me like the Quran is saying that it's flat. That's the best you can do. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you believe in the earth is spherical and you challenge me, you say, well, we have figured out the maths of this, like the Quran says. Well, I'm going to be at a loss, obviously. Right. So now you have to weigh the two different opinions. And we're, I've only gotten started. Yes. But what I'm only right. trying to show from here is a very important principle. That if you say anything about the physical phenomenon, especially cosmology, you better have your math ready. Yes. Okay. If you don't, if you're, it is one thing to look at the observable world. 
But what is behind the observable world at the academic level is the mathematics of it. So here we find a link between Quran and the natural phenomenon. And that is what links, one of the things that links the both together is math, mathematics. Okay. And this is why, just so the audience understands that, for example, uh, let's take a look at uh, the Qibla and new spherical trigonometry examples of Al-Buruni and other, there were many Muslims who did this, but they had entire formulas for the Qibla based upon spherical trigonometry. Triangular, tri why? Because you're on earth, right? And you have some point on earth, you're on earth and you have the sun and you're, you're trying to see the distance sometimes of the shadow. There are many, many formulas, right? And they figured this out in many different ways. But they had a very clear mathematical formula, okay? And it was based upon spherical objects. They understood this because when at the same time of the day, at the same time of the day where one place has one shadow, another has another. Right? So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in, in, in a little bit. Also, I want to mention amongst the many, many scholars who talked about this phenomenon. Um, let me see if I have it. This, okay. Imam Suyuti says, now I'm going to ask you which evidence is stronger. Imam Suyuti says, the expansion of the earth leads to the thought that it is flat, not round. This is understood apparently in Sharia, apparently in the Zahir. Meaning when you're facing the Qibla, you're not, you're, you're, you're uh, facing the Qibla based upon the, 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 it's not like you're, praying from outer space or right you're going on the zahir what is your experience human experience when we put the two concepts together flat and round together every part of the earth is extended per se as the quran says while the roundness is for the earth all in all that means that the extension of the earth also leads to the thought that it is round because any other geometrical shape triangular square pentagon must have a curve when moving from one side to another, because curved shapes do are not ex uh, because uh, curved shapes are not extended. See the following figure, which includes many shapes. Each side is referred to by letters A, B, C, D, except for the circle. It has no sides, meaning the earth, the circle is always extended. There is no you don't come to an end. There's no place where you can say this is not basata. This is not expanded, okay? So no one has ever seen someone whose way bends while walking on the ground in any place on earth like how someone does when walking from A to B to B to C and so on and so forth. Meaning you, you, don't, you, don't ha you, you have sides in all shapes except a circle and it's going to be most properly extended if it's in a spherical shape. Yes, and that circle needs to be in a spherical shape. It needs to be a 3D circle, not a 2D circle, because the 2D circle then again would end from one side. Right. Uh, also, also, Sheikh, something that you said above, it's very important to note, like we were talking about that the Quran is not a book of science, it's a book of science. And so usually the Quran talks about a natural phenomenon, the way we perceive it through our eyesight. And so if somebody is saying that the earth is flat, and that is what Imam Suyuti is saying, that it is perceived as flat when we're looking at it. So if I'm looking at my room, for example, I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm looking, looking at my room, it's flat, right? It's not like it's spherical. I'm not like uh, perceiving the earth as spherical, as being an object in the space, I'm floating above it, or, you know, I have this uh, can of eyesight that can perceive the whole of the earth at the same time. No, my can is, al is always going to perceive the earth as flat. Because he said in Sharia, which he yeah, added that clause, 
meaning you have to look at it from a Zahir perspective, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing about the Quran is Quran is talking to all humanity. So the the experience is going to be true for the farmer, but the farmer, when he thinks the earth is extended, he's not thinking flat earth, right? Or a physicist, the experience is is for meaning the the Quranic words have to be such that it is true for all he, people's all human experiences, no matter yes. if they're a physicist or a farmer or you know in living in the city or the village, it's true for all of them. So the sata and the haha can be in perception, but then in reality we'll need to reconcile ayats like la shamsu yambari la ha. Right. So I'm going to come to that because yeah, yeah. because. To know the, sh the shape of the earth, you have to actually be able to determine that not by the earth itself, but by the calculations of the things that are going around the earth, right? Because yeah. our experience is that it is flat. So there's something else that will tell us if it is flat or not. And that's why when Allah talks about the, uh, the, the sun and the moon, the words Allah uses are different from that of the earth. Right? Meaning Allah doesn't use the word basata for the sun or the moon. No. Right? He doesn't use any of these words for the sun and the moon. For the sun and the moon, Allah uses different words. What is interesting is for the earth, Allah doesn't use the words of movement. For the earth, Allah does not use the words of movement, of any type of movement. Except there are two ayahs I'm going to show you in which there is an indication. It is not qatari, but there's an indication. I'll share that with you. But for the sun and the moon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains one of the attributes Allah uses to explain the sun and the moon is his movement, right? So the movement around the earth by the sun and the moon can give us a hint, but again, it's an inference. It's an inference. Who knows the ultimate reality? Nobody does. Nobody does. I mean, like we were talking about Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, people have tried uh, to show Big Bang from the Quran itself. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the ayah goes like something. Um, mm. And so they say, oh, this is the Big Bang in the Quran. Now, <laughs> the, the latest telescope that has been out there in the universe is called James Webb Telescope. Yeah. Now it's nullifying the idea of uh, Big Bang as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in Surah al Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the earth in ayah number 33. And we made the earth, the earth was dead. We made it life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the moon. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the sun. And then Allah mentions the moon. And then Allah mentions the sun. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning three things. The sun, the moon, and the earth. And Allah says... <laughs> And all of them All of them are flowing in their orbits. And what's interesting is is kaf to kaf, lam to lam, and ya, sorry, fa to fa with ya in the middle. It's like a circle itself. The words are circular. Meaning they're all flying. And then kaf and kaf, lam and lam, fa and fa, and ya in the middle. So there mm -hmm. is an indication, indication here of how they're flying, how they're moving, how they're swimming in their orbits, how they're moving in their orbits. But if you look at the text, the text starts in ayah number 33. Okay. وَآيَةٌ 
الشمس ينبغي لها أن تزرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون This is all part of the same starting with the earth and mentioning the moon, mentioning the sun and there, there's some interesting things here too which I won't go into but everything is mentioned twice earth is mentioned twice, the moon is mentioned twice, the sun is mentioned twice and the sun and the, the night and the day is also mentioned twice while Allah is saying we made everything in pairs in, in this, these ayat. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that kullun means all. Kul means all. Now, what is all? It can't be only the sun and the moon. Kul can only include this. Kul can only be kul if it includes the sun, moon, and earth. And only three things have been mentioned here, right? In these ayat, only the earth, the sun, and the moon have been mentioned. So, kullun fi falaki yasbahun. Now, what flat earthers like to say, except for the earth. Except for the earth. Well, if that is the case, then let's look at other parts. Now, again, the most clear indication that the earth is also swimming and moving is this ayah, I think, of the whole Quran. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Sheikh, can I interject here? Just, yeah. just one thing. I have two very simple questions for flat earthers based on all of this. First is, لَشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَنْ تُزْرِكَ الْقَمَرُ وَاللَّيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارُ وَكُلٍ فِي فَلَقٍ يَسْبَحُونَ Come up with an interpretation of this ayah that can show us clearly that Nothing is moving in the universe. If the sun and the moon are moving, and Allah says in Surah Duha, wa shamsi wa duhaha wal qamari, tanaha, and moon, when it follows the sun, what does that mean exactly? So that would be my first question. No flat earther that I have talked to has ever been able to exegete this ayah in you know in this uh, uh, in, in this context. The second thing is, Shaykh, like you were talking about the rules of exegesis. Allah says in the Quran himself that we should look at the natural phenomenon. We should observe it. So how do flat earthers negate the images from Hubble or from James Webb Telescope? They think it's all conspiracies. Every single, And this is the difference. It's different if you say there's a government that did a conspiracy. Right? Or... If I say COVID-19 was a conspiracy because the media and everyone is spinning it everywhere. But yeah. it's a whole different thing when you say every single human every... is a conspiracy. Oh, why? I mean, why? And so their answer is because, <laughs> uh, their answer is because, you know, and, and I actually answered this in my previous video. Okay. Uh, but part of their answer is that, well, because NASA is lying. And so no, but NASA is lying, therefore everything NASA says is a lie. No, but those images are not processed. The, the images that they are getting from James Webb um, the telescope are not post-processed. Sheikh, okay, you can say that about Hubble because they received the images, then they processed them, then they released them. But there is a live feed for James Webb telescope. Anyone can go and look what that lens is they seeing not, in the universe. Don't believe it. You know, this is the thing, is that when you have all of humanity at stake, no one's falling off an edge when it comes to this model that they want to give us, right? No one's ever seen the great ice wall. Every single experiment that earthers have ever done till today, every single one of them has failed, okay, that has been out in public, okay? It's, it's just a met, it puts Islam in a very bad position. Sorry, Sheikh, but then this is really stupid. And and this brings back to my memory uh, the interpretation of Al Ard by Hani Achin, where he says the earth does not mean the earth, it means the understanding of the scripture. It is the scripture that Allah says, the ha ha, that we have made intellectually challenging for you, and you know, we have made easier for you at times, and we have made difficult for you at times. So, okay. <laughs> Interpretations of what interpretations, I mean, okay. So I think the most clear is this, but there are other verses in Quran because we haven't even talked about the sun yet or the moon yet. Yes. Where it's much more clear. But uh, talking about the earth, uh, let me just, uh, 
mention, I think you'll find this very interesting because I, because this is the first time you might be looking at this this way, okay. but I think you'll find it very, very interesting. In ayah number 15 of Surah Al-Mulk, Allah mentions the earth, the same one. Allah has made the earth very easily manageable for you. So walk upon its regions. And eat from its sustenance. Do you feel secure from Allah who is in the above everything? That the earth will swallow you up. فَإِذَا هِيَ كَمُورٌ While the earth spins. Or while the earth moves. Now the other meaning could be that the tamur is referring to the khasaf itself. Mm. Yes? But the yeah. other meaning is that the tamur is referring to the earth. And it is more likely referring to earth because the noun before tamur is earth before khasaf. Aamintuman fi sama are you feel secure from Allah who is in who is above and way beyond? ard that the earth will, uh, you know, swallow you. Uh, I guess faida tamur while the earth is still spinning. So. I think this uh, the earth uh, will not cause the earth to collapse beneath you while it spins. This is actually a better translation than what I was saying. Because it's in the sense of re a rhetorical question. The other ayah I want to share with you is the one in Surah Al-Namal where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, Let me see where it is. I think it is. Uh, I'll find it in a second. Ah. وَتَرَى الْجِبَالَ تَحْصُبُهُ جَامِدَةً And you see the mountains, Allah says, and you find them firm. تحسبهم, you calculate, you assume. But in fact, they're moving the same way the clouds are moving. Yes. This is the perfection of how Allah has perfected all His creation, all things. And He knows full well what you do. So over here, there can be two possible meanings. One is the one I gave. You see the mountains and you imagine them fixed. But yet they are moving the same way the clouds move. And Allah says, my, my way of creating. One is that this is referring to on the day of judgment. That is the tafsir of the muqaddimin. Okay. Yes. So you see the mountain and you see them as fixed, but yet they will be moving on the day of judgment the same way you will see them moving on the day of judgment the way you see the clouds move. However, Sheikh, this, this translation is, is not really a correct one from the text itself, is it? Because the tense does not change the, uh, you know, it's all in present tense and present continuous tense. Yes. But what's interesting about this ayah is Sunna Allah Lati Atkana Kulla Shay. the Tahliq, it's as if it's referring to the Tahliq itself. Yes. Meaning this world. Yes? Yes. So the second but, translation but, you were but, going but, to but, share. But, yes. but the ayah before it is referring to the day of judgment. Yoma Yungfahu Fisuri. Okay, so and then you will see the mountains fixed. So when you bring the two ayahs together, it makes it 
clear, it's probably referring to the Day of Judgment. If you yeah, look only at this it. ayah itself, if you look at the ayah itself, it makes it look like that it's saying the mountains are moving, even on earth. Yes. Right? So why am I, I'm partly doing this to show people that what are the different dimensions you have to look at? Right? You have to, like, for example, Kullu fi falakin yasbahun. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you just that phrase. That it could be talking about everything except for the earth. But when you put it in the context of the whole uh, the whole ibarra that's there, the whole section that's there, it's talking about the earth, the sun, and the moon. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Right? So now, what I want to ask, I guess, the, the important discussion is this, is that how do you measure interpretation? Meaning, I have an interpret. I feel the earth is flat, and the Quran is saying it's flat. But I can only say that I infer and I think this is the case. At what point does something become qatari? At what point does something become like it is absolute? It is as close to absolute as it can get. I think the ibara, not even looking at the sun and the moon, as far as the earth, kullu fi falakin yasbahun. And the mathematical formulas that the Muslims made and then the West borrowed brings it much closer to certainty. Now, why is this important? It's important because if I am still a flat earther, I have to then admit, just like I will say, that Imam, Sh let's say if I'm Hanafi and you're Shafi, I'll say, this is the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa. And that is the opinion of Imam Shafi'i. But let's say if somebody has an opinion outside the four schools of thought, okay? Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. he'll say, okay, my opinion is Shaz. My opinion is rare. It's not as strong. But the other opinion is Jumhur. What the flat earthers must say, Muslim flat earthers must say, that this is our interpretation. We feel it is valid. These are the reasons we feel it is valid. But the jamhur, the, the, uh, the, the vast majority of the Muslims, historically, past and present, feel the earth is spherical. To say that that is a lie, and to say that the Qibla formulations of their mathematical formulas are a lie, is doing exactly the same thing Dr. Hani is doing with our tradition. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. It, it's it's doing exactly the same thing. So you have to say no. The majority opinion is it's spherical. Majority of the ulama said it's spherical, and our qibla directions and the Ottoman Empire was very firm on this. By the way, the Ottoman Empire made astro global astrolabs like the one I I showed you. But I'll show you again so everybody is clear that the uh, the astrolabes that they had during the Ottoman times, you know, these, you can see the markings of the Arabic there. And uh, they used this to determine the Qibla directions, the distances between places, all of that. Uh You know, <clears throat> anyway, now where do I want to take the conversation now is to something a little bit different so that we can understand the rules of how to do Quranic interpretation. Uh, let me now see if I can find this verse. Oh, okay, yes, I do want to talk about Stutahaf in one point. And that is, you'll find this very, very interesting, I think. The other, I think the most clear, and you know the, the surah that talks about the sun the most is Surah Al-Kahaf. And if you take now literally, now I'm going to give you the opposite. One is the, the meaning of Mahad and Basata and all the other Sutihat, these are all metaphorical, right? And yes. the, they've all been understood to be metaphorical by the ulama, for the most part. Now, let me share with you 
the metaphorical versus literal. Hatta, this is about Zulqarnain. Hatta idha balagha, until he reached Maghriba Shams, until he went to the place where the sun was setting. تغربو, and he saw it setting where? في عين حميئتن, in the sea or the spring that was muddy. Now, how can you find the literal meaning is that the sun is setting into the sea, right? Or into the into the spring. That's the literal meaning. Mm -hmm. Now, if the earth is curved, that would be true. Because at my vantage point, you know, there's this experiment called a double sunset. Yes. You heard of it? You, you mm -hmm. lay down uh, or you lay down and you see the sun go down. And then you stand up immediately and you see the sun go down again because it's going down. I don't know how flat earthers explain the concept of maghrib. Because in the flat earth model, the sun can go further away but it can it cannot set. You see mm. the cloud under the cloud. I mean, you see the sun going under the clouds, right? And setting. It's not like the whole sun is going and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, you first see the sun going half down, then quarter, then it's, right? So if you're laying down and you see the sun go down and you stand up, you'll see it go down again. So now when the sun went down into the, Black Sea in this case, the spring of water, when the sun went down and it vanished from the eyesight of Zulqarnain, it was still shedding its light on the Black Sea because the earth is curved. Yes. Right? So if you take it literally, so here is a maqam of the Quran where majority of the scholars have taken this metaphorically. And it is to be taken metaphorically. Obviously, the sun does not set in a murky spring. It appeared right. to him that it, it was setting in a murky spring. Right. But if you take it literally, then it then it shows that this earth is curved and spherical. So you're talking about the consistency. There, there is no consistency in the Quran. There is no consistency in the flat earthers. They would take one ayah to be uh, to and interpret it, taking it, it its words in literal meaning, and then at other place, you know, they, they, they switch to the metaphorical sense. That's what you're trying to say, Shaykh? That's right. That you there has to be and you have to know when, and you have to be clear that. This has been taken metaphorically. I'm taking it literally. So let's say I believe the earth is, or let's say you believe the earth is round. You'll say, Sheikh Umar, but the word Quran is true. And I take this literally is what it happened, that the sun continued to set in the Black Sea when Zulqarnain couldn't see it anymore. Right? Would that be wrong? No, this is much more, even though it's literal, and even though the ulama took it metaphorically because they couldn't understand it literally, right? So mm -hmm. this is much closer to something qat'i in a sense. Mm -hmm. Something absolute in its sense. Because the, the literal words are... But I'm saying that when the, the flat earthers say basata and mahda, and those are actually metaphorical terms that they're trying to make it literal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... I want to give one last example uh, of this uh, same phenomenon from a different perspective. Uh, I think you mentioned Sutul Mu'minun for something. Uh, okay, yes. Al Mudra. Yeah, Mudra. We might come to that, but let me see if I can mention Sutul Zumar in a special context, okay? Uh, now, Anyone who knows Arabic knows this is very, very easy to understand for a person who knows Arabic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now we're going ab above the earth to the sun and the moon and the movement of the sun and the moon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth in truth. 
ويكور النهار على الليل. I think the word كوّروا يكوّروا يتكوّر you know والشمس yes. إذا كوّرت when the sun is unwound like you take a turban and unwind it is the literal meaning in the tafsir. كوّرا is as close to the meaning of to wrap around or to move around. Would you not say? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. He wraps the night around the day. It also has the meaning of that because of their uh, movement around each other. Yes. Right. So it is the night. And then Allah mentions the night first, which is also interesting because the night is the majority, meaning of the universe, right? Mm -hmm. So you the, the default of the universe is night-ish. And then what? So again, they're, they're moving. Right? So whenever Allah mentions night and day, many times Allah mentions the sun and the moon with the night and day like he did in Surah Yasin. Meaning there's a connection. And the other thing I wanted to share with you is this, is that because we're trying to also talk about Quran and science and natural phenomenon and so on and so forth, so I wanted to share this with you. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you in the wombs of your mother. From one phase of creation to another phase of creation, right? So the fetus goes through different phases of creation, which Quran mentions in other places. In triple darkness. Now, in tradition, this was taken as a metaphorical thing in the three darknesses. But now the science understands that what? That the womb of the mother has three layers. Okay? The uterus has three tissue layers. Okay? It's hard for me to say these words. Okay. There's the inner lining. There's the muscular layer composed of smooth muscles. And then the outer layer. Okay. So three layers. Endometrium, myometrium, and serosa. Both of my parents were doctors, Sheikh, so I have a little. Right. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I couldn't even say that. So so there, there you go. Now you're taking a literal. It's the meaning of the word is exactly under three darknesses. Right. Three darknesses. You could say that it seems to indicate it's referring to the uterus and the three different layers of the uterus. That's an interpretation we never had, but now we have. But what is important is that you have a methodology of interpretation. And you have a methodology to determine that what you're saying is interpretation of what degree of interpretation that is. Not every interpretation is absolute. Some interpretations are an inference, meaning you're taking something metaphorical and saying this is absolute. That will have one. If something is literal, that will have something else. Of course, the Quran is going to exfoliate itself. It'll keep happening until it's absolutely clear this is the truth. So I think that whether you're flat earther or not flat earther, you need to take you need to be more responsible in how you uh, deal with the issue of believing in flat earth if you believe in flat earth first of all you have to say that the majority opinion of the fuqaha and majority opinion of the ummah was that it's spherical anything contrary to that is just complete blindness number 2 you have to say well even though the other side, the spherical side, has mathematical formulas that do work. We have mathematical formulas that are not formulated yet. Mm -hmm. Number three, in terms of interpretation, you have to say that we have inferred this from those ayat of Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the earth in a metaphorical sense, not in a literal sense. Right? These are we are taking metaphor and giving it a concrete 
uh, definition. Whereas the spherical people, they say what it is, what it is saying. It is you don't need to give it an absolute concrete. It is the experience of the person that is observing that. We use other ayat to say that the wahiya tamur or kulnu fi falakin yasbahun or yukawiru layla al nahar. But you have to also admit then what? At the very least, the people who believe the earth is flat, yes, they have some ayat to say it's flat. We will say that. But you have to also say the people who say the earth is not flat, they also have some ayat to support their evidence. Okay? You can't be like, oh, only we understand the Quran and nobody else in the world got it. This is the same problem that Dr. Hani has. Yeah, guys, don't become Dr. Hani Achim, please. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Any last words since I spoke yeah. the most? <laughs> no, Shayma, it was, it's always a pleasure listening to you. Um, the brothers and sisters that I talk to from uh, Bolvi uh, sect in, in my region, and it's spreading like wildfire, Sheikh. There are a lot of flatterers now, more than I have ever, you know, uh, and by the imagined. Way, I think me and you yeah. have nothing against the Bolvi sect. No. no, no, no. We don't have anything against the Brilvi sect, and we don't have anything against any sect. That's true, <laughs> and we appreciate, you know, their scholars, Ahmed Raza Khan, Absolutely, Ahmed absolutely. Ali, whatever he did and whatever he contributed, he created, contributed a great deal, and uh, there's no doubt about that. But Ahmed Raza Khan's, for example, his opinion was a sole opinion versus the majority opinion. Right? Shaz, shaz. Shaz. And so the flat earthers need to know that, okay, I, I, I agree with this opinion, but this is a Shah's opinion. And that's that's fair. That's fair game. Because you're allowed to have a Shah's opinion. Almost every alim has had a Shah's opinion in some issue or another. Right? I mean, there's yes. it's always happy because that's what will happen with people that are using their minds. And I appreciate flat earthers, brothers and sisters, that at least they're trying to use their mind, I guess, to navigate themselves in a world that's very confusing and you don't know what to trust. But again, you know, going back to the four sources of knowledge, I'll say to you, you need to be very careful if you're going to tread on the feet of the giants of the past. Yes. Basically, this is not a matter of uh, kufr and iman. No, if you believe that, yeah, if you believe that earth is flat, fine, man, you know, doesn't make a difference really. Um, you're praying five times a day, you, the five pillars of Iman you have, are, believing whether earth is flat or not is not one of these five pillars. So it's, uh, uh, but, but the people that I talked to, uh, my brothers and sisters from the Brailvi sect, I asked each one of them, and these were four or five youngsters, very, very young people. Uh, I asked them if they have ever traveled, you know, uh, through an airplane, and none of them had ever had. So I think that's also one of the reasons, Sheikh, although it, I might I mean, be naive. Around it, they've all traveled, but they are bought into yeah. it. He's lying in every But room. once you travel on the airplane, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's pretty, I don't know what to say, Sheikh, really, because you look out of the window of the airplane, and it's pretty obvious that this is a curvature that you're flying over. It's not, you're not going like this. They'll tell you that it's the window. The window makes it, yeah. curved, but it's not really curved, et cetera, et cetera. So they'll say the window makes it look that. And you know what? Uh, when I heard that, I went on a plane. And when we were on mm -hmm. the ground level, looking at the other, you know, when you're at the ground and you're looking at the other planes near you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I looked at the other plane by me. I didn't see no curvature. So then I knew, and I think uh, our plane was flying from Turkey to the U.S. Okay. Uh, I think it was, and the plane was really high, and I could mm -hmm. see a curvature. I felt there yeah. was. I could see. You can clearly see a curvature, Sheikh. And these guys, the ones who still negate after flying in an airplane, they should then take paratrooping lessons. You know, fly off a plane with a parachute, and when you're going down towards the earth, you'll clearly see, and there won't be any windows, so you you'll clearly see the curvature of the earth. You know, just 
take some lessons of paratrooping. This is empirically verifiable scientific data that you simply cannot negate. The brethren and sisters I talked to, I told them, this is empirical data, empirical, this is the term, empiricism. This you simply cannot negate. Like you said, Sheikh, in mathematical, physical terms, this is a phenomenon. You just cannot negate. And there is no place in the Quran that goes against this in, 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 um, in a muhkam way where you can present us the evidence from the ibarat al nas itself, from the text itself, and say, look, the Quran is saying the earth is flat. No, you can't show us that. What you can do is tell us that this is the way you Take these ayat to be. All right, fine. I mean, why not? No problem. If you want, if you want to uh, interpret these ayat in these terms as being a flat earth, we got no problem with that. We're not putting a gun to your head and say, oh, this is a matter of kufr or iman. You're thinking for yourself, you have a Shah's opinion. No problem. We welcome it. We welcome all sex. We welcome all thinking. We welcome all progressive thinking. But like you mentioned, Sheikh, saying that this is the absolute, this is the only interpretation, the mutaqaddimin, all, you know, they, they, they all lied to us. This is a huge conspiracy. This is something that we would you know, we would um, take a problem with. Otherwise, it's fine if you want to be a flat earther in the confines of your home or you, you want to believe in this Shah's interpretation. So I just reiterated what you said, Sheikh. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was, there's also another big contradiction, which I'll just mention it without, uh, sh maybe I will, but we'll see. I Because I forget the name of the, uh, Pearson. Pearson is the person who made the rockets that go to the space, okay? Pearson is the one who made the rockets that go to space. And you know why he did? Because he had a dream in which he felt a being called Dajjal is telling him Dajjal, to... yes. Do you remember this? Yes. If Dajjal is telling you to go to space and is telling you how to make a rocket that goes to space, right? And you're using mathematics, obviously, to get to space. Those, in order to get to space, then he has to give you the true mathematics to get you to space. Or you have to use some mathematics to get to space. And this mm -hmm. Dajjal is telling him to get to space. Now, if this Pearson person, whatever uh, formulas he used, which is well known to the physicists, okay, they all uh, use formulas of gravity that these people don't believe in gravity. They all use these ideas of that the earth is movement moving and its curvature and so on and so forth so this it you begin to fall into a type of contradiction on the one side you're saying that oh man, they want to cross back into the heavens but yet uh all, it's all a lie and a sham and it's not really happening so th th this is the contradiction that the flat earthers have. On the one side, they'll say, oh, no, there's no there's no satellites in space. It's all fake. Mm -hmm. On the other side, they'll talk about Pearson making these rockets that will take us to space. Right. <laughs> so which one is it? Right. Which one is it? Is it that there's no satellites in space? Or is it that that the Jal wants us to go to space, like the ways the jinns used to go to space before mm -hmm. the coming down of Quran? They want to go into space, so they're teaching and allowing man to go into space, or however you want to interpret it. So I think there's a contradiction amongst many of them. And then, Sheikh, uh, these flat earthers, how do they believe that the Jannah and the Jahannam, they exist? Have you ever talked to them about that as well? Well, I don't think they have a problem. I mean, with Jannah and Jahannam, they're the same as us. That's part of a different dimension. In a no, Sheikh, but if, if the Earth is not spherical, if other planets are not spherical, they're not following the sun around Sagittarius A in a milky way, then really, where is, where is hell and heaven? Then you don't have the string theory. Then you don't have the theory for multiple universes. You don't have theory for multiple dimensions. You don't have the mathematical right. equation. That, you know, that is a longer conversation. But yeah. I will say this. Just saying. Earth, I'm just the saying. The world that they created is pretty ugly mm -hmm. compared to the world that we know. It's much more. Yeah. And with the latest research that's coming out, it's again pointing to the Big Bang is not. And that the Earth 
more and more seems like the center of all observation and radiation and so on and so forth. So I think I wanted to put forward this so that our flat earther brothers and sisters can think about how they're addressing this issue so that it will not affect the iman of the people in a negative way. How they're addressing this issue so that other people are not going to become flat earthers that end up in shirk. Because what happens is, this is, and I, you know, have been asked several questions by flat earthers, and they end up following into this uh, because the flat earth is from the Bible. Okay, so this is where uh, they're getting it. And so flat earth, and if I just say God, so you'll get these images. Where, okay, so this is the, when you see the whole scope of what they're saying, okay, uh, and then some people are like, oh, that's not what I believe. It doesn't matter because once a person starts listening to a Christian that's talking about flat earth, this is the image that they're going to get. And that is, I don't know if you see this, but, you know, there is, uh, there is the earth, okay. And then there's the sky, then there's a dome, and then under the dome, and then there's the, the firmament, firmament from which the clouds and then the rain happens, and then there's the heavens, and then God at top. So they give God a location, mm. which is shirk, the world of senses, beyond the world of this dimension. So anyway, that's like you said, a different... Uh, yeah, it's a very complex issue, really. Some, thank you so much. So, thank you. Jazakallah khair, ya Sheikh. So I hope that uh, we gave many examples of different types of interpretations that I hope our brothers and sisters and even myself will be careful of when we're talking about natural phenomenon, like, for example, the Big Bang. We shouldn't say the Quran is telling us about the Big Bang. What we should say is the Quran indicates this. Like yes. I like the ayah about the Big Bang was one of the ayahs that like I thrived upon, right? But I could say Allah is saying wa inna musi'un. We're expanding the universe. It doesn't have to be in the context of Big Bang, right? Yes. There's some parts of the universe that are expanding, others are contracting, and that's fine. Sure. So anyway, yeah. So uh, inshallah till next week. Inshallah, jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam.